Two years have passed since the deadliest shooting rampage in our nation's history, when 58 people were killed at the Route 91 Music Festival in Las Vegas. The gunman opened fire on festival goers from his hotel room at the Mandalay Bay before turning the weapon on himself. Police recovered 23 assault-style weapons from the shooter's room. And while the shooting opened another channel for the discussion of gun control, it also brings to light the mental health of those who live with the trauma of mass shootings in America. Cronkite News reporter Jenna Yanoni spoke with an Arizona man who survived the shootings about how he copes with the memory of that night in October. Jenna? That's right. So today marks two years since that tragic day in 2017. With 58 lives lost and nearly 700 injured, healing can be a daunting concept. We spoke with survivors to talk about lingering mental health effects and the road to recovery. On October 1st, 2017, a gunman opened fire on a crowd of concert goers at the Route 91 Harvest Music Festival in Las Vegas, where 58 people lost their lives. Former Arizona resident Justin Uhart saved Jan Lanborn's life. Now, the two have a relationship like no other. I'm not really a, a talkative person about it, but when she's around, I do talk about it, and uh, we definitely open up to each other because we had such a dramatic, you know, 12 hours together that we will always remember for the rest of our lives. Uhar and Lamborn treated themselves to steak and whiskey at dinner last night in Las Vegas. This morning, they picked up flowers and paid a visit to the Healing Gardens, a memorial dedicated to the victims and recovery. She's alive, and we are able to walk around and hold hands during that, um, just on the path during the uh, memorial, and just, it, it is comforting. Mental health care is crucial for recovery. The National Center for PTSD estimates that 28% of people who have witnessed a mass shooting get diagnosed with PTSD. A mental health counselor says that shootings leave a long-term mental imprint. In the very beginning, you know, for a lot of trauma survivors, they go, I'm never going to be normal again. I'm never going to be able to go to a concert or go to a big public event without thinking about how terrified I am of where are the exits, are these people safe, who am I with, what can I use to protect myself. Um, so that takes a really long time to overcome, and, and that small exposure that kind of comes with being able to bring yourself back to environments like that in a more protected way. As for you, Hart, well, he's making strides towards healing. The last two years, I didn't go to the uh, Las Vegas White Crosses. Last night, Jen and I went. Um, it was nice and very humbling, but um, it's, it's still very emotional time of year, for sure. But two years after the carnage, some questions remain unanswered. In January, the FBI announced that it was ending its investigation into the massacre. The agency was unable to determine the motive, meaning that we may never know what prompted one of the darkest days in modern U.S. history. In the Broadcast Center, I'm Jenny Anoni for Cronkite News.